saying, Omar radiallahu an, Omar, or uh, and stuff, he read a kuppah, did a kuppah, and he said just two words, it took a lot, mean fear a lot. And by that time, he had his whole kuppah prayer. He started Jummah prayer. Picture, a whole kuppah today lasts about how long? 30 minutes? An hour? Picture, he can start and just say, it took a lot. Pray. Done. That's the stress. How important it is to have the fear of Allah. And guess what? We Muslims are falling into a sickness. I like to repeat this. We are, you see the soy Bible right here? We're doing this in the masjid. We're walking directly in the masjid and saying, let's not Islamize the masjid, let's Christianize it. Indirectly. I'm not saying this is directly you walk with the Bible and you go in. Because you say all we are sinners. Well, and soon after you're going to hear, oh, we're born a sin. But you, right now you're hearing, we're all sinners. I'm not saying you can go to that extent, but it sounds that way. But we are not all sinners. We itself, we sin, but we ask for forgiveness. That's what the Muslims say to believe. That you ask for forgiveness, do whatever you want, and then ask for forgiveness, and you're forgiven. Who says you're going to be forgiven? That's the question. Did anybody tell you this? Allah Sata is the judge. You have 99 names of Allah. How do you know that you're going to be forgiven? You're taking the word of Allah now. You're saying that He's going to be forgiven. How do you know? Because in the first chapter in this Quran, the Holy Quran right here, it says to beware of the wrath of Allah. Allah's most merciful and stuff in the first three verses, in the third verse, it says, most gracious, most merciful. Master of your judgment, fourth verse. Do you alone be worship? Do you alone be seek help? That's chapter, that's verse 5. God is in the short path. The path of those who by their favors, not those who by their rat, nor those who go astray. Remember the rat part. He didn't exclude the rat. So anytime when you see mercy, you see rat. And guess what? Today the Muslim Ummah are not realizing what's the mistake happening. We see that we see the hadith talks about so many stern punishment events uh, on the Muslims sometimes. That the first people to enter the hellfire is who? I'm asking, who is the first person to enter the hellfire? The sheikhs, the scholars, and stuff. Why? The intention was wrong. They were purposely trying to be sheikhs, imams, and this stuff to please people. For people to recognize them. This is not what you're supposed to do. Your job is just to give the message of Islam. Your mindset needs to change and become a Muslim who's true to his deen. True to Islam. Not one who has a mindset or a plan in it to be recognized by people. Have a clear heart. Be purified. Because we Muslims today need to be purified. We, because remember, Allah will judge everybody intentions. Sahih al-Bukhari. Ahadith number one. Remember, first ahadith of Sahih al Bukhari will be the intentions. So, I'm just going to end my subject with concluding some points. We Muslims are falling into a sickness, and I'll list them out to you. This Ummah, that we say we're all sinners, we have to ask for forgiveness, and then we're forgiven. How do you know? That's point number one. Two, the Muslims today, instead of being Islamicized, is being Christianized. Do you know that? Three, we see Muslims today not teaching people about deen enough, not teaching about the true Islam. They're just doing their day, everyday lives, just going to work all day, like this is what, we're, what the purpose of life is. Remember, I made, a, I made a video. What is the purpose of life? Check this video out later, and you'll see what's the real purpose. It's worship in different ways, more than one that I mentioned. And there's other points I can mention, but it's not coming to mind right now. But I would like to end with a subject with Surah Asr. It says, by the time, surely man is indeed lost, except those who do righteous deeds. Let me, let me read it to you from the Quran. Surah 103. Open. Open one, 103. Verse 1 to 3. It says, 
By the time it says what usr inna lisana la fi kusr illa lazina amnu wa amlu salihat wa tawassaw bil haqq wa tawassaw bil sabr By the time man is indeed in loss except those who do believe and do good deeds and exhort one another the truth exhort one another the patience meaning bring what the truth bring what the guidance and bring what the patience This will happen by time and guess what this religion right here is to perfect the Bible. It perfect all the other religions because it says in Surah nine verse thirty three, it is this time it will prevail over all religions. The Quran says this. I'm not saying this, so this is not my words. The Quran, my authority, is saying this. So what is our purpose of Dawah? Just to give a message. We're not supposed to impose on people because Muslims today start imposing on Muslims. You do this, you do that, and so. Just bring Islam what it truly means. It's not about imposition. It's about just giving guidance. It's the person choice to accept. Because guess what? Only the angels are not created with a free will. The jinns and mankind is created with a free will. So we have to determine, and from our actions, what we determine by, what we determine by, if we go with the Quran, inshallah, we'll go to paradise. If we go against it, with Allah, we'll judge. Uh, it's, uh, how much we did, good and bad deeds, is like a weight scale. When Adam did of good deed will be seen on the day of judgment. Read the Quran where he will say it. Now one way the bad deed will be seen. One atom weight. So what we see is we Muslims don't impose on people. Give the guidance. Practice Islam and stop. Because today Muslims are saying this. Well, if I show the fear of Allah to non-Muslims, I'm not saying this. I'm saying to your strong Muslims, show the fear of Allah. Then they will understand that the fear of Allah will not make, mean that if Allah is merciful, Allah won't just say, you won't say to them that Allah is merciful and stuff, and then afterwards they can take, they can do anything they want to ask for forgiveness. No. You will show them that Allah is the most severe in punishment. But to a non-Muslim and a Christian, of course you can tell them. Or a weak Muslim. Because if a weak Muslim come up to you and ask, I did this, committed this wrong, am I going to be forgiven? I'm going to say, well, the Prophet did this such and such hadith where he forgave this person because of this and stuff. To bring them. Because if you tell them no, they may want to leave Islam. But now to a strong Muslim, you're not going to do that. Or else you're going to make the strong Muslim weak and so What your aim is to make the weak Muslim strong and the strong Muslim more stronger. Not the weak Muslim more. Weak Muslims are already weak. Where we're making the strong Muslim weak also. We're not going to do that. This is the downfall of this Muslim Ummah. And I end my subject with the day. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon all of you.